G'day everyone, I'm going to continue this light tackle series and today we're going to be talking about line, leader and knots. Before I get into that, I just want to say buying braid, you'll see everything from kilos, pounds to PE and it can be a bit confusing when you're first starting out what everything means. Kilos is the kilos of the breaking strain, pounds is the breaking strain in pounds. PE, which is the more confusing one, is actually the thickness of the line. I think it came from an old way of measuring silk threads, but it's been adapted to fishing braids. When PE first started getting used, it kind of felt like a P2 braid will break at 20 pounds. A lot of times nowadays, you'll have a good braid that will say P2, but it'll break over 30 pounds. There is no direct correlation between the PE rating and the pounds anymore. You can't like do a direct comparison of that. Almost no one talks about line in kilos. Even in Australia, we talk about it in pounds or PE. So if I'm talking to my mate and I say, oh, I hooked a Spanish, I was on PE3 and it nearly spooled me. If you're talking about PE3, you're not just talking about your line. You're also talking about what setup you're using because your whole setup will be a PE3 setup. It's kind of a general way to categorize fishing gear. So get your head around PE. When I'm talking about my light tackle in all these videos, these light tackle videos, I'm talking P1 and P2. When I go on to medium tackle, that's going to be P3 and P4. When I go to heavy tackle, that's pretty much just P10. I do a, quite a large jump there in my tackle. The way I've found good braids in the past is I'll research, talk to my mates who are fishermen and see what they're using. And I'll get an idea of a few good brands that I'd like to try. And then I literally go into a fishing shop, feel them, look at them, choose one and try it. It costs a fair bit of money. Braid's usually about a hundred plus dollars to fill your reel. You gotta kinda commit to a braid that you think is gonna be good and gain that experience. See what you reckon of it and catalog that braid at a certain point, compare it to other braids that you get in the future. I highly recommend trying lots of different braids until you find one you like. The braid that I use and have been using for the last couple of years on my P1 and P2 setups, my light setups, is J Braid. Grand. I have had absolutely no issues with this. This one's 40 pound because it's just my spare spool of 40, but that's the package. That's what it looks like. It's good stuff. Don't get wind knots. I have not had any premature snaps. I haven't had any issues with it. It's good line and it's pretty cheap too. It's not too expensive. So I highly recommend this. I know there was an earlier J braid that there was some issues with, but this is the rehashed J braid and it is good stuff. I'll just quickly show you what leaders I use. Light tackle, I use fluorocarbon sometimes. This is J thread. I'll use 10, 20, and 30 pound fluorocarbon. I will also use the Verivas fluorocarbon, both really good. And I use System Shock 10 pound, 20 pound, and 30 pound for mono. You can go heavier on your light setup. You can put 60 pound, 80 pound leader. I've chased Barramundi before and I've used 20 pound mainline and 80 pound leader. So you can jump up a lot with your leader, but these are the general leaders that I use. 10 to 30 pound for my P1 and P2 setups. I'll definitely go heavier if I need to. I want to talk to you about fluorocarbon really quickly. Fluorocarbon is meant to be more transparent, so you can't see it. I think it has a refractive index that matches water. It's meant to be less visible in water compared to mono. The fish that I'm going for, they're not shut down estuary fish or something that see lures all day long. They're ocean going fish that see a little plastic or a little diver or something, they're probably going to hit it. They're not too worried about the leaders. So fluorocarbon is harder, more abrasion resistant line. The mono is softer, less abrasion resistant. Fluorocarbon is more see-through in the water. This is more obvious in the water. It sounds like mostly pros for fluorocarbon at the moment, but the cons, in my opinion, are knots. Mono is much easier and nicer to tie knots with because it's soft. So your FG will bite deeply into the mono and it will be a very firm, nice, secure knot. Fluorocarbon, you can definitely tie an FG with it, but not as easy to tie. And there is also an issue where if you've been fishing for a very long time and your knot is banging over and over again on your guides, fluorocarbon has layers to it, mono doesn't. And those layers can kind of split and separate at the back of your knot. I've seen it happen a couple 
couple of times on my light tackle fluorocarbon knots. I've never lost a fish or anything because of it. I've seen it and then retired. But after hours of use, a fluorocarbon FG knot can split at the back of the FG. Be wary of that. I personally prefer mono, but if you were fishing mono and you weren't getting any hits, maybe it's time to put on some fluorocarbon and see if you've got some very shut down fish that you're casting out, in which case fluoro might get you that hit. I've just rigged up a light tackle rod here. I want to show you the way I've rigged this up. We have the braid running into an FG knot, 2.1 meters of leader, which then runs into a four wrap uni knot, which goes to a swivel, to a split ring, to the lure. The reason that I do 2.1 meters leader, much shorter than my heavy setups, I always cast with my leader knot in between the first and the second guides. If I do any longer than 2.1 meters, I've got too much dangle off the tip of my rod to have a nice cast. It's kind of a personal choice thing. I always cast with my leader knot between the first and second guide because I cast pretty hard when I cast and if it sits below the first guide, that leader knot will smash and go crazy and create a wind knot. Whereas if it sits above the first guide or on the first guide, it just shoots out smoother and it doesn't have that crazy whip to it. That is the reason why I do 2.1 meters is it's the perfect amount of dangle for this rod. If I had a longer rod, I might do a longer leader. Now I'm just gonna quickly show you what it looks like if that was tied onto a soft plastic. Braid, FG knot, 2.1 meters of leader into four wrap uni knot with a loop into the jig head. You'll see how to tie those knots in the next couple of videos. That concludes the line leader and knots tutorial. I'll just quickly recap everything. PE rating and pounds are the two that you need to pay attention to when you're looking at braids. PE is a good way to communicate what setup you're talking about to people. Pretty universal way of categorizing gear these days. And I think you should try and get your head around PE and try and learn what it means. It's basically just the thickness of the line. I use J-Braid Grand. I lean towards mono because it's easier to tie, but if I'm having issues not hooking a fish, I will go for some fluorocarbon. 10 to 30 pound in general is what I use for light tackle, but if I'm going for anything that requires a heavier leader, like maybe a jewfish on a light setup, I will happily put 60 to 80 pound leader as long as my guides of my rod can deal with that. We just finished with showing the way I rig up. It's pretty basic stuff, but I want to keep these films basic for people who really just need that first step into fishing and don't have someone who's teaching them and finding it difficult to learn. I know a lot of people find it easier to just watch a film on something than to read about it. Next two films in the playlist are going to be the FG knot and then the uni knot, which I've already made those films. I'm just going to slot them into the playlist. And after that, we're going to go on to talking about some specific lures that I use for light tackle and we'll keep going from there. Phew.